theory of a monopoly has been around for a long time. And um, I mean, historically, when societies were run by kings and queens, uh, they pretty much had the, the power to um, um, to allow or not allow people to make or use things. But the, the, the in U.S. law, at least, patent law begins with the Constitution. I will just read the very the section um, from Article One that states: "The Congress shall have power to promote the progress of science and useful arts by securing for limited times to authors and inventors." the exclusive right to their respective writings and discoveries. There you have it. The Congress has the power, and that power is enshrined in Title 35 of the United States Code. Um, we then have a, a set of rules to, in, to guide in the interpretation of the law, and the Patent Office has what's called the MPEP, which is the Manual of Patent Examining Procedure. And this manual is like the size of the Manhattan Telephone Directory or something like that. It's got a, um, it actually instructions for examiners on how they're supposed to interpret um, different uh, uh, things that they have to read in people's patent, applica patent applications. And I will be referring, and I'll tell you when I'm referring to it or quoting from it, the Manual of Patent Examining Procedure quite extensively later on in this class. Um, but to start with, we're going to look at a couple of the um, um, uh, paragraphs, if you will, from 35 USC that describe how patents should be written. The first thing um, you need to know when you're reading somebody else's claim. Now, it, it, a lot of this course is going to assume that you've you've had a patent search done or, you've, or you're doing a search, and that search is relevant to something that you're developing as a product development.